Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to I Am Loved Church. So, <clears throat> it's really cold. I'm trying my best to stay warm. Let me just uh, say something real quick. Uh, I wasn't in at the time in the military when they wore these, but I was in the military. <clears throat> but even if I wasn't in the military, I don't even care if people wear military clothes and they weren't in the military. So, I don't know. And with that, <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned is there's a lot of reasons that we go into doing things and not for the right reasons. You know, there are kind of two people in the world in this analogy. There are people who do things for the right reasons and there are people who do things for the wrong reasons, such as like becoming a police officer or such as like becoming a teacher or becoming a minister or whatever have you. You know, <clears throat> There are people who do things for the right reasons and people who do things for the wrong reasons. And to discern those reasons is quite a challenge. And uh, I, I can't really tell you how to, you know, discern the difference, but I guess you can tell. <clears throat> Or you have to make that choice. People who do things for the right reasons, they go into something with a genuine heart in a general admiration to help people. Such as if you're a teacher, you want to help people um, in whatever area they struggle with, that they need knowledge or information or, you know, correction. <clears throat> Uh, to better their life or whatever circumstance. And there are people who do things for the wrong reasons, such as bad teachers who just want to condemn and crush people, you know, and treat them like a bug under their foot. <clears throat> Some people who do it just for the power and authority of knowledge, you know. Which one are you? And how do you learn? <clears throat> I've been doing these videos for quite some time and uh, I don't want to say it gets easier or doesn't. I'll just say I've been doing them. And as you start to move forward, suddenly all the people who don't like what you have to say start showing up out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like uh, throwing a, I don't know, a sandwich on top of a anthill or something, you know, or Just, they just come out of nowhere and they start to say why you're wrong and what you're doing or try to discourage you and say, oh, this is crap or whatever they say. And that's a hard thing to take. I don't, for me anyways, I'm, I've been doing this for some time, making videos and stuff. But <clears throat> I guess, how do you handle the haters, you know? <laughs> Just a little, get in a little of that. I think for me, your love for Jesus has to be greater than this world. I mean, if for you people who are commenting these things and trying to destroy someone, if what you believe is right, then, then your faith will show that in your lifestyle. You know, People who are Pharisees that Jesus describes are people who constantly watch people so they can find a way to destroy them. You know, they're constantly observant of, just like they were constantly observant of Jesus. It's not bad to be observant, but if you're just, if you're looking to be observant like a child to learn from your parents, that's one thing. If you're looking to be observant to crush and destroy someone, that's an entirely different thing. Whereas the good the good student wants to learn genuinely 
and the bad student wants to look at the teacher to see if I can find a way to, you know, destroy this person. And one of the things that I've learned is, you know, you can switch and go back and forth between these things, being a bad student or teacher or vice versa, a good student or teacher. As I've learned in this life is one of the most important things that I that we should all remember is love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, <clears throat> I had someone say whatever they said to me online today. <clears throat> Didn't give a reason why <clears throat> they just said it <clears throat> about one of my teachings. And I was like, you know what? Let me look at this. So I looked at the scriptures and I was like, I can't find anything that they're talking about, you know. But let me do this. Let me look at this person's lifestyle. Where are they? What do they do? Who are they? You know, just to kind of get an idea. I don't know who this person is. You know, should I value this opinion? Should I value what this person is saying? Does this person live out a godly lifestyle? You know, those are things to take in consideration. <clears throat> and I find that no. No. This person is in the shadows shooting arrows in the light. No one knows who this person really is. And then I realized something, wow, it doesn't bother me. But it was, if it was someone that I looked up to and that corrected me, I'd be like, ooh, you know? For those people that, if you're on a path and you're trying to do grid and amazing things and you are and you get those haters, just remember, you know, do you value this person's opinion? You know, do they do they show and are they living a lifestyle that you that is pleasing to God, hopefully in 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 uh, showing a light and radiance in their community? Or are they a nomad who nobody knows and they're just angry about basically everything and they just always cast bricks and stones with their mouth or their actions at people? You know, it's I've got stuck in this state. <clears throat> where I would condemn, let's just say, a pastor, and I'm sorry. <clears throat> and same thing happened when I became a filmmaker, was I would watch these movies from Hollywood, you know, just knocking them. It's easy, right? It's easy to criticize and judge. And suddenly I had this voice or someone tell me, if you can do better, go ahead, do it yourself. Convicting as heck, man. I was like, Phew put me on the spot you know one of the times I was like man look at these homeless people they don't do nothing all day and then I had a person that stand next to me that I was talking to this about and they're like I used to be homeless I was like damn that's humbling so that's my question to you for you guys who are Pharisee the modern day Pharisees and you're watching people's lifestyle just to just compare yourself <clears throat> to destroy them versus just to learn something and be their friend What's more valuable? Is it more valuable be, to be right? To sit in your little pew or your corner or your office and to be right and condemn and crush people because you're so wise and you're so whatever you think you are? Or to have a friend that you can laugh and enjoy company with? If some of you guys are Pharisees to the point where you don't even go out into the world anymore because you're so judgmental and critical about every little thing. What Jesus says is, I come to set free. I didn't come to condemn. He says, if you abide in me, you'll know how to love these people who don't know me. You will see through their sins. But those of you who think you're self-righteous, you've been disqualified and pruned, not because you're living in grace, because it's by grace that you're saved. Jesus destroyed the pride, you know? As a father looks down at his children, they're all arguing and bickering of who's better and who's greater and who's more smarter and who's this and whatever your reason is. Jesus said, I'm coming down there. I'm finishing it. I want peace. I want peace with you people. I want my children to live in peace. I want them to get along with each other. I'm tired of this boasting. Maybe that's speaking to something to you. I'm tired of you guys living in your churches. I'm tired of you guys living in your offices, your small little space, your small little bubbles, your small little reality. And I want you to go into the world and I want you to befriend these other people, not because you're better, because you're not. You're no different than them. I loved you just the same as I loved them. 
And the fact that you have grace over your life is because you believe that. And if you don't, it's because you have lifted your foot against me and think that you're so holy and so righteous. You're no different than them. I see you no different. The only difference that there is is that you know me or you're supposed to know me. You're called to know me. And that's what I've learned. Today I woke up, took a shower, and I was just like, you know, after committing a sin, or, it was just like, man, I, I'm just so unworthy. I'm just so unworthy. I'm just so falling short. I'm just, dang, what is wrong with me? I'm a sinner. Can you not look at yourself and see yourself for who you really are and say, wow, why do you love me, God? I'm a sinner. And then he says, repent. Repent. Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe that's the hardest thing for you guys to do. Maybe it's hard for you to say, I'm sorry. Because nobody is right. None of us are right. We're only right when we're led by the spirit. And God has anointed his teachers with the spirit. Sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing through the dividing soul and sunders or something like that. Basically, it's a sword that goes in all directions. And here's something interesting. You remember when God cast Adam and Eve out of the garden? Basically said, I will send the flaming sword that will go in all the directions. He's talking about the word of God. Jesus said, I came down to bring the word. And this is how I'll justify that. He says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For the sword out of his mouth in Revelation, he talks about. What he's basically saying is this. This is one of the things I've learned. I've had someone gloating or loving the things that I post, and then out of nowhere, they just started just condemning me. Thank God I didn't seek acceptance from this person, even if it was temporarily, because it would have hurt my feelings. For no one can love you like Jesus can love you. Not everyone's going to agree with what you do. You know, even God's going to rebuke you, but he's going to rebuke you for the right reasons. But if you could be loved by God, you don't care about what other people think about you. But the fact that you do shows that you're living more in the world for the acceptance of what people are, sinners, who are imperfect, who cannot think straight or walk a straight line. than you care about the one who is perfect, who not only created the straight line, is, is beyond infinitely. We can never comprehend him. But the point is, he gives us the Bible so we can learn how to be humans. Not so we can learn how to be divine whatever. Because we couldn't do it ourselves. If we could, then Jesus would have never needed to come. So a good teacher is someone who's like a child. And they're also a good student. They know that they don't know everything. They're always willing to learn. They're always open. They're always humble. But a bad teacher are those who become boastful, boastful in their own wisdom. And some of you guys think just because you know the truth that Jesus died for your sins, you actually fell away from the truth if, if you're not boasting in what Jesus did for you. And you're looking at everybody else as being stupid or being whatever, or lost. He says, I tell you, you're lost. You're lost because you're no different than them, except you should be humble not boasting in your wisdom, not boasting in your own understanding, but boasting what Jesus did for you every day, every second, every moment. Jesus died for you and died for your sins. No one can take away your sins except the blood of Jesus. There's many things in this life to boast about. We find pride in anything in every moment. I'm more wiser than you, I'm more greater, I'm whatever. When it's all about dying, it's all about what Jesus did. The Last Supper is about his body. It's being spread out. His unconditional love, his word. Why is there so much church division? We believe the same things. It's already hard enough that we have to go against all these other false teachers and and religions that aren't real, let alone that we're inside the church. We have to go against each other. Well, it's not always entirely bad. The reason why is this. Jesus said, I came to send a sword. <clears throat> where mother will go against daughter and father against son and da- uh, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and so on and so forth. The reason he says that is he's saying is this, I want you to know my word and I want you to n- seek the truth above all else. Seek the truth. 
not because of these people accept the tr accept it as truth or this church accepts it as truth. I want you to seek beyond those things, beyond man's approval, because you may be wiser than your teacher, and you're under your teacher, and their teacher is trying to teach you, but he's not your teacher. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. You have one teacher. You have one Lord. Jesus says, they will no longer ask each other about me, for they will all know me. It's God who gives us this grace, each and every one of us. Every man is a leader. And so, good te the difference between the teachers is, for me, is just the intention in the heart. And that's the difference between the judgment as well. You can't always look at something from the surface and tell that it's someone condemning you when their heart is actually in it for truth. But to be honest, I think that if you're following the Holy Spirit, everything you teach would be sound. You don't have to justify yourself. For the Pharisees justify themselves. And Jesus says that you are those men who justify yourself. But if it's good and true, you'll know it. And even if people rebuke you, you won't care. You know why? Because you know your, your teaching is truth. The fact that you have to justify yourself shows that maybe you're an heir. Uh, man, I don't think you ever get used to being haters, but you know what the thing about it is? <clears throat> I mean, I'm a hater of someone too, don't get me wrong, but you know, that's my Pharisee in me. That's just part of our nature, but it doesn't mean it's right, you know? And learn to live and follow the Holy Spirit, learn to live in grace and truth. It's not always easy. Every day is different, new challenges. Gotta let go of yesterday, living today. Let go of the past moment. Let go of them, everything. You know, enter in a place of holy dwelling. With there's no judgment. There's just peace and love, and that's what we strive for. You know, but in that we have to learn what sin is and what it's not. Ooh, what time is it? Oh, okay, I think I got a little bit. Good teachers and bad teachers. It's all in the intention of your heart. I would like to hope that I think that I teach to uplift. <clears throat> and at times, I teach to condemn. <clears throat> um, a good teacher teaches to uplift. Teaches to help people. A bad teacher teaches to f feel more superior than others. And they hate it when they're wrong. And they hate not knowing something. That's, those are signs. I'm not saying they're true, but those are signs of a bad teacher. A proud teacher. A teacher who's like, they get embarrassed if they don't know something. Or ashamed. Like they have to one-up you. I gotcha. And that's not that's why not all of you guys are teachers or shouldn't be teachers. Because you use it to hurt people. And when we get saved and you finally believe in Jesus and you're all zealous about it, yeah, you're gonna be that way, but as you mature or should mature in Christ, you should become more like Christ. Jesus judged these Pharisees, basically everybody, <laughs> not because he wanted to hurt anyone, it's because he cared. Because what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. That's why he says make righteous judgment. In order to make a righteous judgment, your heart has to be in the right place. You actually have to love your neighbor and make a judgment because you care for your neighbor, not because you want to be right. And you want to condemn your neighbor, for I tell you, that will come back to you. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's why it's important to follow the Holy Spirit. Because everything that I do in my flesh is condemning and condemnation is a sin. And it's for the bad reasons and bad mo motives. But if I do it with the power of Christ who lives in me, then I'm doing it and setting people free from their sins. But it's not me who's doing it, but him who lives in me. So if he is not living in you 
And if your faith is not greater in him, then his living in you is not greater. He only lives and abides in me as much as I trust and abide in him. That's what Jesus said. He says, I live in my father and my father lives in me. And he says, if you believe in me, I will live in you. But where is your faith? Do you put your faith in him? How much do you trust him? How much do you invest into Jesus? How much? Because if you do that, then your life would reflect him. And if you called or think you're called to be a minister, then go out and be a minister and teach these things. But your faith is not great enough in the Lord Jesus, because if it was, you would expose yourself and show the world what a man should be like, a God-fearing man. But the fact that you hide in the darkness shows that you do not know the Lord as well as you think you do because you're not saved by what you know. You're saved by whom you believe and what you put your trust into and how much you put it into. For I tell you that all have tried to enter in, but few found and few were able because they realize something. Are you ready to realize that? Are you ready to step out in faith? Because that's what Jesus did for you. And he says, pick up your cross and follow me. That example that I laid before you, it wasn't just for me to pour out grace while you are gonna remain a sinner and why you're going to remain afraid and why you're going to remain hopeless and why you're going to stay in the shadows. It was for you to come out into the light and show people what your God is like. If your God is greater, then show that to the world. But if he's not, then stay in the shadows, stay in the office, stay in the condemned, confined bubble that you've built around your own wisdom and understanding. Knowing is just not enough. I know that Italy is there and it exists. I know that there's planets outside the solar system. But it's a whole nother thing when you step out into it. I thank you for watching. God bless.